Hello everyone and welcome to the Civilization Overview for the Bulgarians. The Bulgarians are a new AoE2 civilization that has arrived with Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition. This video will break down the tech tree and I will speculate just how this civilization will be played out in game. Let's get to it! The Bulgarians are classified as an infantry and cavalry civilization. The militia line upgrade is free, their town centers cost 50% less stone, and Bulgarians can build a creep post, which we will talk about more in a minute. Their team bonus is blacksmiths work 50% faster. First, let's go through the tech tree. Bulgarians lack the crossbowman and arbalest upgrade in the archery range, while having access to elite skirmisher, hand cannoneer, and heavy cav archer. The lack of crossbowmen is a standout to me, as previously Spanish was the only civilization to cap out at archer. But with access to Parthian tactics, thumbring, bracer, and chemistry, their skirmishers and cav archers are options if you are in desperate need of some range. Now to the barracks. They max out at two-handed swordsman and halberdier. This is alarming at first, until you remember that the Militia Line upgrades are free for this civilization, meaning their man-at-arms attack is extremely deadly and it removes the need to spend resources and time upgrading the Champion Line as a whole. So if you're in Feudal Age and you need some quick infantry, you can go right for man-at-arms. If you're in Castle Age, you can go for the Long Swords. It's always right there for you. Not only do they get the free upgrades, but they also get access to supplies, which is a new technology from the barracks, and with supplies, the Militia Line will potentially cost 15% less, which further justifies making two-handed swordsmen and halberdiers with this sieve. Cavalry units is really where this sieve shines, and Bulgarians do get access to fully upgraded paladins and hussars from the stable. Combine this with the Stirrup's unique technology, the Light Cav Line attacks 25% faster, and let's not forget, upgrades from the blacksmith for all of these units, come in 50% faster. In the Siege Department, Bulgarians have access to everything except Bombard Cannon, and on water they lack Fast Fire Ship, Elite Cannon Galleon, and Heavy Demolition Ship. There's nothing huge missing in the University, they get everything except Bombard Tower, Arrow Slits, and Fortified Wall. Sorry Fatslob. Their Monks are nothing special, so I wouldn't expect much there from them. And on the economy side of things, they are left without the final lumber upgrade to Mansoul, and also guilt from the market. But that's just a brief synopsis of this Civ. Let's get more in depth with the civilization. Just how should this Civ be played? The first two bonuses on the top left stand out to me the most. It is already very common for high level players to go for Man at Arms play, and with a free Man at Arms upgrade upon reaching Feudal, this might just be one of the best early aggression sieves in the game. I could even see them competing with men-at-arms from civilizations like Japanese, Burmese, Magyars, and even Celt men-at-arms. While Japanese infantry attacks faster in Feudal, Burmese and Magyars get that plus one attack starting in Feudal, and Celt men-at-arms can run faster, they still need to spend the resources and the time to research that men-at-arms upgrade. I simply don't see anyone competing with a Bulgarian man-at-arms rush unless they are able to buy themselves a little bit of time. Moving on to the next point, the Town Center Discount. This bonus will give Bulgarians some exciting flexibility. Town Centers normally cost 275 wood and 100 stone, but for this sieve a Town Center is only 50 stone apiece. This makes them a sieve that you can boom with and possibly get a jump start in those less aggressive games like Black Forest and Arena. Even on aggressive maps where Feudal Age Warfare ensues, it is so much cheaper for them to expand their economy after a long and drawn out Feudal Age. And if you save all of that stone on cheap town centers, you will save it for one very exciting new building. The Cree Post is a building unique to the Bulgarians, and it is essentially a mini castle. This building costs 350 stone and allows you to fortify your base and create the Konic, which is the Bulgarian unique unit. The Kree Post has about half the stats of a castle across the board. 
It has less hit points, less attack, and it can also only create the conic, whereas the castle can create petards and trebuchets. In my opinion, this is more of a building to use in aggressive castle age games because of the inability to create trebuchets and petards uh, could create some real headaches later on in Imp. Moving on to the conic, which is this unique unit you can create out of creeposts and castles, it costs an expensive 60 food and 70 gold. It is a cav unit which can do some serious damage when fully upgraded. With full upgrades, the Conic has 150 HP with 5 melee armor and 6 pierce armor. This unit is absolutely insane on its own, but there is one special twist. When the mounted unit dies, the rider hops off on his feet to fight another day. Never before has this been seen in Age of Empires 2, and the stats on the rider are crazy as well, with 50 HP, 17 attack, 3 melee armor, and 6 pierce armor when fully upgraded. Keep in mind, for that dismounted rider to be fully upgraded, you will also need to research infantry technologies that also includes the other unique tech for Bulgarians called Beganes, which I'll mention soon. So your opponent is making camels to counter your conics? Well, they'll need a lot more of them when these mace-holding riders get back on their feet to continue the fight. So as previously mentioned, the unique technology Stirrups gives light cav and conics 25% more attack speed. So not only do you have a deadly light cav or hussar raid waiting for you an imp when you're playing Bulgarians, the conics will be that much faster with attack. This is extremely helpful if you're looking to dish out hell with conics, or if you're a little short on cash and wish to raid with light cav. This tech costs 400 food and 200 gold, which is pretty pricey for castle age, but definitely worth it for long drawn out battles. The imperial age unique tech is Begains, which affects the militia line. Costing 900 food and 450 gold, it gives all of the militia line plus 3 armor. Though they do not get access to champion, it will be a great help with their two-handed swordsmen, halberdier, and dismounted conics. The Bulgarian civilization is a civ that has very few weaknesses. The feudal age options are exciting with the free men-at-arms, the castle age is exciting with creep posts, cheap town centers, and free long swordsmen, the imperial age is just loaded with firepower. It is an amazing civ from top to bottom and the lack of crossbow and arbalest could make things awkward at times, but with access to paladins, conics, siege onager, siege ram, heavy scorpion, and more, it is as deadly as it gets. I think the only real weakness with this civilization has to be that everything that they get access to is strong, but expensive. So when we're looking at more competitive games, I think that it will take Bulgarians time to get the conics, get the siege onagers, get the paladins rolling. I'm very much looking forward to casting and playing with this civilization over the next few months. So thanks for watching this AoE2 Civilization Overview. If you're interested in checking out more AoE2 content, make sure to click like and to subscribe to the channel and toggle on alerts. In addition to making Age of Empires 2 videos, I frequently stream Age of Empires 2 on my Twitch page, so if you have interest, the link is below and I'd love to have you stop by. That's all for now, and I'll see you next time, guys.